Proverbs chapter 6, through the Bible. Part 3. Seven Things God Hates. It is unbelievable to some folk that God could hate. They consider Him as only a God of love. The reason they have this kind of reaction is the result of following a deductive reasoning based on the syllogistic method of reasoning. The major premise is that God is love. That is true. The minor premise is that love is the opposite of hate, and that is also true. Then the conclusion they draw is that God cannot hate anything, but that is not true. God is love, but He hates evil. We can see the same thing in our human relationships. You love your little child, but you hate the fever that is racking his little body. You love your child, but you hate the mad dog with the frothing mouth that comes into your yard and attempts to bite your little child. If you love your child, you will hate the mad dog. As long as there is a world of contrasts, a world in which sin has entered, we will love the right and hate the wrong. Or, on the other hand, if you love sin, then you will hate righteousness. The Word of God tells us to love the good and hate the evil. When we get to the book of Ecclesiastes, we will find that it says that there is a time to love and a time to hate. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 8 Now we find that there are seven things God hates. This is His list. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. An heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. Proverbs 6 verse 16 to 19. God definitely says that He hates these things, and we ought to put them on our hate list also. This isn't the first time God has stated that He hates something. If you will turn back to Deuteronomy, you will read, Neither shalt thou set thee up any image, which the Lord thy God hateth. Deuteronomy 16 verse 22 God hates any kind of idol or anything that would take His place in our hearts. God's hate is mentioned again in Psalm 45, verse 7, the great millennial psalm. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. One follows the other as the night follows the day. God said to the early church in the book of Revelation, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Revelation 2, verse 6. You see, my friend, God loves, but also God hates. It is like the flavor of sweet and sour developed by Chinese and European chefs to a fine art. God is love, but, by the same token, God is hate. And Scripture adequately states the case. The number seven in the Bible indicates not perfection, but completeness. God has a complete hatred of these things, and they are all the works of the flesh. They are things that reveal the total depravity and the utter degradation of the human species. God has gone on record that He hates them. God denies the thesis of liberal theology that He is some sentimental and senile old man who weeps but never works, that He simply shuts His eyes to the sins of mankind and is tolerant of evil, that He forgives because He hasn't the intestinal fortitude to punish sin. God says, I love, but He also says, I hate. The idea that we are to be charitable to the guilty is abroad in our land because we don't have the courage to go through with a strong program of punishment. That is the thing that is corrupting and wrecking our society today. God is willing to punish the guilty. God is not afraid of public opinion. God doesn't run from any appearance of offending men. God is no coward. God says that by no means will he clear the guilty. His laws are inviolate and inexorable. Now let's look at this ugly and hateful brood. These belong on the hate side of God's ledger. 1. 
a proud look. The literal is eyes of loftiness. It is the attitude that overvalues self and undervalues others. This is pride. It is that thought of the heart, that little look and that turn of the face, that flash of the eye which says you are better than someone else. God says, I hate it. It is number one on his list. He puts it ahead of murder and ahead of drunkenness. God hates the proud look. It is strange that in churches today one can get by with a proud look and no one would say a thing about it. Do you know that the first overt act of sin in heaven, the original sin, was pride? It was when Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning, said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14 verses 13 and 14. And he is the one who came to man in the Garden of Eden and said, Ye shall be as gods. Genesis 3 verse 5. It is quite interesting that behind all psychological disturbances and psychosomatic disease, there is the trunk of a tree from which the abnormality springs. Do you know what that is? It is a lack of being a complete personality. It is wanting to be somebody important, wanting certain status symbol, one of which is independence of God. It is wanting to be one's own God. It is making the little self to be God. That is the reason a salvation by works appeals to men. Little man likes to say, I'm going to earn my own salvation. I'll do it myself, and I don't need you, God. I certainly don't need to have your son die for me. When I come into your presence, I want you to move over, because I am just as good as you are, and I'm going to sit down right beside you. My friend, a work salvation is the result of folk who are psychologically sick. God resists the proud, and he has respect unto the lowly. He says that he will bring down the high looks. God said to Job, Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Job 40 verse 12